Chapter forty nine of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Inferno thirteen. The Seventh Circle. The Second Ring. Violence against oneself suicides and squanderers not yet had nessus reached the other side when we had set our steps within a wood which was not marked by any path whatever no green leaves there but leaves of gloomy hue no smooth and straight but gnarled and twisted twigs nor was there any fruit but poison thorns no thickets rough and dense as these are owned by those wild beasts that hate the tilled estates that lie between the Cecina and Cornetto. Here in those ugly harpies make their nest, who drove the Trojans from the Stopa days with gloomy prophecies of future loss. Wide wings they have, and human necks and faces, their feet are clawed and feathered their great bellies they utter wailings on the uncouth trees my kindly teacher then began to say before thou enter any further know that in the second ring thou art and wilt be until thou reach the horrid plain of sand hence look around thee well and things thou see that from my words would take away belief moans i heard uttered upon every side but saw no person who might make them there hence utterly confused i checked my steps i think he thought i thought that all those voices were uttered from among those thorny trunks by people hiding there on our account the teacher therefore said thou break off a little twig from any of these trees the thoughts thou hast will all be proven false i then stretched out my hand a little way and from a sturdy thorn tree plucked a twig whereat its trunk cried out why dost thou rend me then after growing dark with blood its cry began again why dost thou break me up hast thou no spirit of compassion in thee men were we once and now our stocks become thy hand ought surely to have had more pity even if the souls of serpents we had been as from a fresh green log that at one end is being burned and at the other drifts and makes a hissing with the escaping air so from the broken twig together issued both words and blood i therefore dropped the end and stood dumbfounded like a man who fears had he before been able to believe O oh, wounded soul replied my sage to him what in my verses only he has seen he had not set his hand on thee whereas the thing's incredibility has made me lead him to do what i myself regret but tell him who thou wast that he by way of compensation may refresh thy fame up in the world where he can still return the trunk with sweet words thou dost so entice me that I cannot keep still. Be not annoyed if I am tempted to a little talk. I am the man who once held both the keys of Frederick's heart, and he who turned them round so gently, locking and unlocking it, that most men from his secrets I withhold. So faithful was I to my glorious charge, that for its sake I lost both sleep and strength. The courtesan, who never turned away her harlot eyes from Caesar's dwelling-place, 
a common form of death and vice of courts gainst me inflamed the minds of every one and those on fire inflamed augustus so that my glad honours turned to wretched grief my mind to vent its feelings of disdain and thinking to avoid disdain by death made me unjust against myself the just by this tree's uncouth roots i swear to you i never broke the faith i owed my lord who so deserving was of reverence and to the world should one of you return let him assist my memory which still lies crushed beneath the blow which envy gave it a while he waited then the poet said since he is still lose not thy chance but speak and ask him other questions if thou like whence i to him ask thou again whate'er thou thinkest satisfactory to me for i could not such pity stirs my heart hence he began again so may this man do freely for thee what thy words request dim prison spirit may it please thee still to tell us how within these knotted trunks a soul is bound and tell us if thou canst if any from such limbs is ever freed thereat the trunk blew hard and afterward that wind was changed into the following word briefly shall a reply be made to you whenever a wild spirit leaves the body from which itself hath torn itself away minos commits it to the seventh ravine into the wood it falls nor is a place allotted to it but where fortune hurls it there like a grain of spelt it germinates it grows into a sapling and wild tree the harpies feeding then upon its leaves cause pain to it and for the pain of vent like other spirits for our spoils will come though not that any be reclothed therewith for tis not right to have what one casts off we'll drag them with us here and then our bodies will all around the dismal wood be hung each on the thorn tree of its hostile shade we still were giving heed unto the trunk believing that it wished to tell us more when we were startled by a sudden noise as likewise he is who perceives a boar and pack of hounds approach his hunting post and hears the crashing of the beasts and boughs and lo two on the left two naked were and scratched and fled away so rapidly they shattered all the branches of the wood the one ahead now hurry hurry death and the other one who thought himself too slow cried lano not so knowing were thy legs when running from del topo's battle joust and then perhaps because of failing breath he there made of himself and of a bush a group the wood behind these two was full of swarthy bitches ravenous and fleet as greyhounds are when from their chains unleashed into the one who crouched they set their teeth and tore him into pieces bit by bit they then made off with those his suffering limbs thereat my escort took me by the hand and led me to the bush which all in vain out of its bleeding rents was shedding tears o giacomo it said dost thou what boots it thee to make a screen of me and how am i to blame for thy bad life when over him my teacher stopped he said who then wast thou that through so many gashes are flowing forth with blood such painful speech and he to us o oh, spirits that have come in time to see the unbecoming havoc which from me thus hath torn away my leaves collect them at the foot of my sad bush i to that town belonged which for the baptist changed its first patron 
wherefore he for this will always make her mournful with his art and were it not that on the arno's bridge there lingers still some little glimpse of him those townsmen who rebuilt her afterward over the ashes left by attila had caused that work to be performed in vain i made myself a gibbet of my house inferno fourteen the seventh circle the third ring violence against god blasphemers since love for my own native place constrained me i gathered up the scattered twigs and leaves and gave them back to him who now was weak thence to the bound we came where from the third the second ring is severed and wherein a frightful form of justice may be seen to manifest aright what here was new i say that we had reached a barren plain which from its bed removeth every plant the woeful wood is as a garland round it as round the former is the dismal moat there on its very edge we stayed our steps its soil was of a dense and arid sand whose nature differed in no way from that which once was trodden by the feet of cato vengeance of god how much by every one thou oughtest to be feared who readeth here what to these eyes of mine was manifest of naked souls i many flocks beheld who all wept very sorely while on each a different law appeared to be imposed a few lay on the ground upon their backs and some were seated cuddled up together while others moved about continually most numerous were those that moved around and least so those that under torment lay but all the fear had their tongues to wail down on the whole great waste of sand there reigned with gentle fall dilated flakes of fire like flakes of snow that fall on windless alps as were the flames which alexander saw in india's torrid regions as they fell upon his hosts unbroken to the ground and this he met by ordering his troops to trample on the soil because the flames when single were more easily put out even such descended here the eternal heat whereby the sand was set on fire as tinder is kindled under steel to double pain and ever without resting was the dance of wretched hands that kept now here now there slapping away each latest burning flake thou teacher i began that conquerest all except the stubborn devils who came out against us at the entrance of the gate who is that great one who seems not to mind the fire but lies there scornful and awry so that the rain seems not to ripen him and that same one who had observed that i concerning him was questioning my leader cried as i was alive such am i dead if joan should tear that smith of his from whom in wrath he took the pointed thunderbolt wherewith i smitten was that final day or should he tear the others each in turn in mongy billows smithy black with smoke by calling out help help good vulcan help even as he did on Flegra's battlefield and should he shoot at me with all his might no glad revenge would he obtain thereby thereat my leader spoke with so much force that i had never heard him use the like in that thine arrogance o caponeus is not distinguished art thou all the more chastised no torment saving thine own rage were for thy furious pride a fitting pain then with a gentler mien 
he turned to me and said, One of the seven kings was he who Thebes besieged. He held, and seems to hold, God in disdain, and little seems to prize him. But, as I told him, his own spitefulness is fit enough adornment for his breast. Now follow me, and see that thou meanwhile set not thy feet upon the burning sand, but to the thicket keep them ever close. In silence we went on, and came to where, out of the wood, a little stream spurts forth, whose ruddy colour makes me shudder still, as from the Buli Kame springs a brook, which afterward the sinful women share. Even so went that one down across the sand. Its bottom and both sides had turned to stone, as also had the embankments on each side. I hence perceived the crossing place was there. Of all the other things which I have shown thee, since first we entered through the outer gate, whose threshold unto no one is denied, nothing has ever by thine eyes been seen, as notable as is this present brook, which deadens o'er itself all little flames. These were my leader's words. I therefore begged that he would freely grant to me the food, desire of which he had so freely given. Amid the sea there lies a wasted land, he told me thereupon, whose name is Crete, under whose king the world of old was pure. There is a mountain there which, happy once, with waters and green leaves was Ida called is now abandoned like a thing at warm. Willem, as trusty cradle for her son, Rhea selected it, and when he wept, to hide him better, caused a shouting there. Within that mountain stands a great old man, who holds his shoulders toward Demiata turned, and who, as at his mirror, looks at Rome. His head is formed of finest gold. His arms and breast are of the purest silver. Then, as far as to his loins, he's made of brass. All chosen iron is he down from there, save that baked clay his right foot is, and straighter he stands on that than on the other foot. Each of these parts, except the golden one, is broken by a cleft whence trickle tears, which, when collected, perforate that cave. From rock to rock they course into this vale. Then Acheron, with sticks and phlegeton they form, and through this narrow duck descend, as far as where one goes no further down. They form Cositus there, and what that pool is like thou see, hence, here, it is not told. And I to him. If thus this present stream Is from our world descended, Why alone on this ring's edge Hath it appeared to us? And he, Thou knowest that the place is round, And though a long way thou hast gone already, Ere to the left descending toward the bottom, Through the whole circle thou hast not yet come, Wherefore, if aught that new appear to us, it should not bring amazement to thy face. And I again, but where of Phlegeton and Lethe teacher, for of this one silence thou sayest the other of this rain is made? And he replied, Thou certainly dost please me in all thy questions, but the red streams boiling ought surely to have answered one of them. Lethe thou'lt see but there outside this cave, whither souls go to wash themselves, when once their sin repented of has been removed. And then he said, It now is time for us to leave the wood. See that thou follow me. The banks which are not burned afford a path, and up above them every flame is quenched. Inferno 15 the seventh circle, the third ring, violence against nature, 
sodomites. One of the hard embankments bears us now, and overhead the brook's mist shades them so that from the fire it saves the stream and banks. Such bullocks as to keep the sea away the Flemings make between Whitsand and Bruges, through fearing lest the high tide break upon them, and as the Paduans make along the Brenta their villages and strongholds to defend, ere Kirantana feel the summer heat. In such a way were those embankments made, although the master did not make them there so high or thick, where he may have been. So far we were already from the wood, that I could not have seen just where it was, even had I turned around to look behind, when we, a band of spirits met, who came along the bank, each one of whom looked hard at us, as in the evening one is wont to look at people when the moon is new, and toward us they were knitting close their brows, as an old tailor at his needle's eye, when by that gathering I had thus been eyed, one of them who had recognized me, seizing my garments, him exclaimed, How wonderful! And I, when toward me he had stretched his arm, fastened upon his roasted face mine eyes, so that though blistered it did not prevent my intellect from recognizing him, and downward having bent my face toward him, I answered him, are you here, Sir Brunetto? And that one, O oh, my son, be not displeased, should Brunetto Latini a little way turn back with thee, and let the troop go on? I beg you to with all my power, said I, and if you'd have me sit with you, I will, if it please that one, for with him I go. O oh, son, he said, whoever of this herd stands still at all, lies prone a hundred years, nor shields himself when smitten by the fire. Therefore go on, I'll follow at thy skirts, and then I'll join again my company, which goes bewailing its eternal loss. I dared not from the path descend to go upon his level there, but held my head bowed down like one who walks in reverence. And he began, What fortune, or what fate, before thy last day, leadeth thee down here, and who is he that showeth thee the way? I answered him, when, in the life serene up yonder, in a vale I lost my way, before my age had rounded out its noon, thereon I turned my back but yestermorn, this one, as I returned to it, appeared to me, and o'er this path now leads me home. And he to me, If thine own star thou follow, thou canst not fail to reach a glorious port, in the lovely life I judged aright. And had I not so prematurely died, I, seeing heaven so well disposed toward thee, had given thee comfort in thy work. But that ungrateful wicked people which of old came down from Fiesole, and which e'en now smacks of the mountain and of hard grey stone, for thy well-doing shall become thy foe, and rightly, for among the acid sobs it is not fitting that sweet figs bear fruit. An old fame in the world proclaims them blind, a greedy, envious, overweening folk. See to it that thou cleanse thee from their ways. Thy fortune hath in store for thee such honour that either party shall be hungry for thee, but distant from the goat shall be the grass. Let them, the beasts, so fear solely make litter with their own selves, nor let them touch the plant, if on their dung heap any virgin still, in which the sacred seed may live again of those old Romans who remained therein, when of such wickedness the nest was made. If perfectly fulfilled had been my prayer, I then replied to him, You had not yet been banished from the natural life of man for in my mind is fixed, and stirs in now my heart, that dear and kind paternal face you showed, when in the world from time to time you taught me how man makes himself eternal, 
and how much gratitude I feel for this must, while I live, be in my words perceived. What of my course you tell I write and keep with other texts for a lady to explain, who can, if ever I attain to her? I only wish that this be clear to you, that I, if but my conscience chide me not, am ready for whatever fortune wills. Not new unto mine ears is such reward. Hence, as she lists, let fortune turn her wheel, and let the country clown his mattock ply. Thereat my teacher over his right cheek turned back, and looked at me, and then he said, He listens well, who giveth heed to this. Nor speaking thus do I, on this account, go on with Sir Brunetto, asking who his fellows were, of greatest note and rank, and he to me, "'Tis well to know of some, our silence on the rest will merit praise, for short the time were for so long a talk. Know then, in brief, that clerics were they all, and mighty men of letters of great fame, soiled by the self-same sin when in the world, and with that sad crowd yonder Priscian goes, and Francis of Accorso too, and him, if thou hadst had a longing for such scurf, thou couldst have seen there whom the servant's servant changed from the Arno to the Bacchilione, where he behind him left his ill-strained nerves. I speak of more, but I can come and talk no further, for a new dust-clad I see rising o'er yonder from the sandy plain. People with whom I must not be are coming, let my tesoro, in which I am still alive, be recommended thee. I ask no more. Then round he turned, and seemed to be of those who at Verona run across the meadow to win the green cloth, and of these he seemed not he who loses, but the one who wins. Inferno 16 the seventh circle, the third ring, violence against nature, sodomites. I now was where the booming of the water, which fell into the following ground, was heard like the dull buzzing sound which beehives make, when three shades separated from a group which neath the rain's tormenting punishment was passing by and ran along together toward us they came and each of them cried out stop thou that by thy garb dost seem to us a citizen of our corrupted town alas what wounds i saw upon their limbs both old and recent by the flames burnt in it pains me still but to remember them my leader giving heed to these their cries turned his face round toward me and said now wait to these men yonder courtesy is due and were not for the fire which arrow-like the nature of the place shoots forth i'd say that haste were more becoming thee than them and they when we had stopped began again their old refrain and after they had reached us all three of them made of themselves a wheel as champions oiled and nude are wont to do when looking for an advantageous grip before they come to giving blows and wounds thus as he wheeled each turned his face toward me so that his feet continuous journey made in opposite direction to his neck and one began even if the wretched nature of this soft place and our burned shriveled faces bring us and our requests into contempt still let our reputation bend thy mind to tell us who thou art that dost so safely rub on the soil of hell thy living feet he in whose footprints thou dost see me tread was though we go both nude and hairless now of higher rank than thou believest him he was the grandson of the good galdrada his name was Guido Guerra, and when alive, his wisdom and his sword accomplished much. The other, 
who behind me treads the sand tagiayo aldobrandi is whose voice should have been welcomed in the world above and i who with them am tormented here yakopo rusticucci was and surely my shrewish wife than aught else hurts me more if i had been protected from the fire i would have leapt into their midst below and i believe my leader had allowed it but since i should have burned and baked myself fear was victorious over my good will which made me eager to embrace them there i then began your state impressed within me not scorn but so much pain that only late will all of it entirely disappear as soon as this my lord said words to me because of which i thought within myself that there were people coming such as you of your own town am i and evermore have i your doings and your honoured names related and heard mentioned with regard i leave the gall and for the sweet fruit go which my voracious leader promised me but to the centre must i first descend so may thy spirit lead thy members long the former thereupon replied to me and after thou art gone thy fame be bright tell me if courtesy and worth abide within our town as they were wont to do and whether they have wholly gone from it for guglielmo bossiere who but newly has been in pain with us and with our mates goes yonder grieves us greatly with his words the people newly come and sudden gains have bred in thee such pride and such excess that florence thou art even now in pain thus with uplifted face i cried whereat the three who this as answer understood looked at each other as one looks at truth if satisfying others other times cost thee so little happy thou that thus of thy sweet will dost speak they all replied hence so mayst thou from these dark places saved return to see the lovely stars again when saying i was there thou shalt do thee good see that thou tell the people about us they then broke up their wheel and in their flight it seemed as if their nimble legs were wings amen could not have been as quickly said as they then disappeared my teacher therefore thought it advisable for us to leave i followed him and not far had we gone before the water's noise was so near by that had we spoken we had not been heard and as the stream which is the first that eastward from montevezo takes a separate course upon the left slope of the apennines and which above is aquaceta called before it flows into its lowly bed and at folly is of that name deprived booms loud because of falling o'er a cliff above san benedetto of the alp where for a thousand there should refuge be even thus as over a precipice it fell we found that coloured water roaring so that very soon it would have hurt our ears I had a cord around about me girt, wherewith I once had thought that I could capture the leopard with the brightly coloured hide, when from me I had wholly loosened it, even as my leader had commanded me, I coiled it up and held it out to him. Thereat, upon his right, he turned around and hurled it to some distance from the edge down into that profound and dark abyss. Surely some strange new thing must needs reply said i within myself to this strange signal which with his eye my teacher follows thus ah uh, with what caution men should deal with those who see not only what is done by others but with their wisdom see into their thoughts he said to me what i am waiting for and what thy thought now dreams will soon come up soon to thy vision will it be revealed ere uh, to a truth that hath a falsehood's face ought one to close his lips as best he can for though one faultless be it brings him shame 
but I cannot suppress it here. Hence, reader, even by the verses of this comedy, so may they not be void of lasting favour, I swear to thee that through that coarse dark air I saw a shape which would have chilled with wonder, however brave a heart comes swimming up, as he returns, who going down at times to clear an anchor clinging to a reef, or aught else lying hidden in the sea, above extends and draweth in below. End of chapter 49Chapter 50 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Inferno, 17, The Seventh Circle, The Third Ring, Violence Against Art, Usurers. Behold the wild beast with the pointed tail, which, crossing mountains, breaks through walls and armour. Behold who sickens all the world with stench. My leader thus began to speak to me, and signalled to it to approach the edge, near where the marble we had traversed ended. And that foul image of deceit came on, and landed on the bank its head and chest, but o'er the edge it drew not up its tail. Its face was as the face of a just man, so pleasing outwardly was its complexion, the body of a serpent or the rest. Two paws it had, all hairy to the armpits, its back and breast, as well as both its sides, were painted o'er with snares and wheel-like shields. Ne'er with more colours in its woof and warp did Turks or Tatars manufacture cloth, nor by Arachne were such webs designed. As flat boats sometimes lie upon the shore, in water partly, partly on the land, and as among the greedy Germans yonder, the beaver seats himself to wage his war, so lay that worst of beasts upon the edge which closes in the sandy plain with stone. All of its tail was quivering in the void, and twisting upward its envenomed fork which, like a scorpion's weapon, armed its tip. Our path must turn aside a little now, my leader said to me, until we reach that wicked beast reclining over there. Around our right breast, therefore, we went down, and took ten paces on the very edge, thus surely to avoid both sand and fire. And... After we had come to it, I saw, upon the sand, a little further on, some people sitting near the precipice. My teacher them, that thou mayest take with thee a full experience of this ring go on, and see the nature of the life they lead. There be thy conversation brief. Meanwhile, till thy return, I'll talk with this wild beast that its strong shoulders may be yielded us. Thus, further on, along the outer edge of that seventh circle, all alone I went, to where the melancholy people sat. Out of their eyes their woe was bursting forth. First here, then there, they helped them with their hands, now from the flames, now from the heated soil. Not otherwise do dogs in summer time, now with their paws and with their muzzles now, when air by fleas or flies or gadflies bitten. When, on the face of some 
I set mine eyes, on whom the woeful fire is falling there. I knew not one of them, but I perceived that from the neck of each there hung a pouch, which had a certain colour and design, wherewith their eyes appeared to feed themselves. And, as I looking, came into their midst, Azure, upon a yellow pouch I saw, which had the form and semblance of a lion. Then, as my gaze continued on its course, another I beheld, as red as blood, exhibiting a goose more white than butter. And one of them, who had his small white pouch, emblazoned with an azure pregnant sow, said to me, what dost thou in this hour, ditch? Now go thy way, and since thou livest still, know that my fellow townsman, Vitaliano, will sit beside me here upon my left. I, with these Florentines, a Paduan am, and very frequently they stun my ears by shouting, Let the sovereign knight arrive, who bring with him the pocket with three beats. Herewith his mouth he twisted, sticking out his tongue as doth an ox that licks its nose. And I afraid, lest any longer stay might anger him who warned me to be brief, turned from those weary spirits back again. I found my leader, who had climbed already upon the back of that fierce animal, and said to me, Now be thou strong and bold, by stairs like these shall we descend hereafter. Climb thou in front, for midst I wish to be, so that the tail may do no injury. Like one with cotton fevers chill so near, that pale already are his fingernails, and that but looking at the shade he shudders, such at the words he uttered I became. But that shame made its threats to me, which renders a servant strong when in a good lord's presence. As on those horrid shoulders I sat down, I wished to tell him, See that thou embrace me. My voice, however, came not as I thought. But he who succoured me at other times and other straits, as soon as I was up, encircled and sustained me with his arms and then he said now carry on move thou on wide be thy wheels and gradual thy descent bethink thee of the unwonted load thou hast as from its mooring place a little boat backs slowly out even so did he withdraw and when he wholly felt himself in play to where his breast had been, he turned his tail, and moved the latter, stretched out like an eel, while with his paws he gathered in the air. I do not think that there was greater fear when Phaeton let go his horse's reins, whereby, as still appears, the sky was burned, nor yet when wretched Icarus perceived his back unfeathering through the melting wax, while calling him, his father cried, Thou holdst an evil cause. Then mine was, when I saw that I was in the air on every side, and gone the sight of all things, save the beast. The latter, swimming slowly, wends his way, wheels and descends, but I perceive it not save by the wind below and in my face. The waterfall I now heard on the right, making a horrid roar beneath us. Hence I outward thrust my head, with eyes turned down, more fearful of the abyss I then became, for fires I now beheld, and wailings heard. Hence, trembling, I clung closer with my thighs, and then, for I perceived it not before, by the great torments which on diverse sides drew near, I saw our wheeling and descent. Even 
as a falcon long upon the wing which without seeing lure or game bird makes the falconer say alas thou comest down descendeth weary through a hundred rings whence he had swiftly started and alights far from his lord in angry sullenness so likewise geryon set us down below close to the bottom of the rough-hewn rock and of our persons rid as fast as flies an arrow from a bowstring sped away inferno eighteen the eighth circle fraud the first trench pandars and seducers the second trench flatterers and prostitutes a place there is in hell called malebolge holy of stone and of an iron hue as is the round wall which encircles it right in the midst of its malicious field yawneth a well exceeding wide and deep of whose construction in its place i'll speak round therefore is the girdle which remains between the well and that hard high wall's base and ten great trenches subdivide its bed as is the appearance which where many moats and circle castles for the wall's protection the section where they are presents such was the one whose trenches furnished here and just as in such fortresses small bridges stretch from their threshold to the outmost bank so crags ran from the bottom of the cliff across the banks and trenches to the well which gathering them together cuts them off in this place then we found ourselves when dropped from geryon's back the poet thereupon held to the left and i behind him moved upon the right side i beheld new cause for sympathy new pains and scourges new wherewith the first trench was completely filled down at its bottom naked were the sinners this side the middle facing us they came beyond it with us but with quicker steps means such as those which at the jubilee the romans took because of its great throng to have the people pass across the bridge who toward the castle all on one side face and toward st peter's go their way while all move toward the mountain on the other edge this side and that upon the dark stone floor horned demons with great scourges i beheld who from behind were fiercely whipping them ah how they caused them to lift them up their heels when by the first blow smitten certainly none waited for the second or the third while i was going on mine eyes were met by one of them and instantly i said i fast not from a previous sight of him to make him out i therefore stayed my feet and having stopped with me my gentle leader assented to my going back a little that scourged one thought that he could hide himself by looking down but little it availed him for thou that castest down thine eyes said i unless the features which thou hast are false benitico cacianimico art but what brings thee into such pungent sources and he to me unwillingly i tell it but forced i am by thy transparent speech which makes me recollect the olden world i was the one who led gizola bella to do according to the marquis will however the disgusting tale be told nor am i here 
the only Bolognese, that weeps, nay, this place is so full of us, that not so many tongues are taught to-day, between Savena and Reno to say Sipa. And if, therefore, thou wouldst have pledge or proof, recall to mind her avaricious breaths. As thus he spoke, a demon with his lash smote him, and said to him, Panda, be gone! There are no women here to sell for coin. I then rejoined my escort, whereupon, when we had taken some few steps, we came to where a crag projected from the bank. This we ascended with the greatest ease, and, turning to the right along its ridge, we left those everlasting circling walls. When we were where it hollows out below, to let the scourge pass through, my leader said, Now stay thy steps, and on thee let the sight of all these other ill-born spirits strike, whose faces thou hast not perceived as yet, because they've gone with us in our direction. As from the ancient bridge we watch the troop, which on the other side was toward us coming, and which the scourge was likewise driving on without my asking, my good teacher said, Look at that great man there, who, as he comes, for all his pain, seems not to shed a tear. How royal an appearance he still keeps. Jason is he, who by his doubtiness and wit deprived the Colchians of their ram. He passed the Isle of Lamas on his way, after its pitiless and daring women had given up to death their every male. With tokens of his love and flattering words, he there deceived the maid, Hypsipale, who previously had all the rest deceived. He left her there with child, and all alone, him to this punishment that fault condemns, and for Medea too his vengeance wrought. With him go those that in this way deceive. Be this enough to know of this first ditch, And of those two that in its fangs it holds. Already were we where the narrow path Forms with the second bank across, And makes therewith abutments for another arch. We thence heard people in the following trench, who whined and groaned, and with their muzzles puffed, while smiting their own bodies with their palms. The banks were crusted over with a mould by vapour from below, which, sticking there, offensive to both eyes and nose became, so deep the bottom that there is no means of looking into it unless one climb the archer's summit where the crag is highest. Thither we came, and from it in the ditch, people I saw immersed in excrement, which seemed from human privies to have come. While peering with mine eyes down there, I saw a head so foul with filth that whether clerk's or layman's head it were was not apparent. Scolding, he said, Why, greedier, art thou to look at me? than at the other foul one. And I, because, if I remember well, I've seen thee with dry hair ere now, for thou, Alessio Intermini, of Luca art, that's why I eye thee more than all the rest. And he them, as he beat upon his pate, those Flatteries immerse me here below, wherewith my tongue was never surfeited. Then, after this, my leader said to me, See that thou urge thy glance a little further, that with thine eyes I quite attain the face of that disgusting and dishevelled wench who yonder claws herself with filthy nails and crouches now, and now is on her feet that Thais is the prostitute who answered her paramour when he had said, 
have I great thanks from thee. Nay, <laughs> marvellously great. Here with them, let our sight be satisfied. Inferno 19 The Eighth Circle Fraud The Third Trench Simoniacs O oh, Simon Magus, O oh, his wretched followers, since ye the things of God, which ought to be the brides of righteousness, rapaciously adulterate for silver and for gold, it now behoves the trumpet sound for you, for in the third great trench your station is. We now had climbed the next tomb-spanning bridge, and were on that part of the crag which hangs directly o'er the middle of the trench. Wisdom supreme, how great the art thou showest in heaven, on earth, and in the evil world! How justly, too, thy virtue makes award I saw that on its sloping sides and bottom the livid coloured stone was full of holes, all of one width, while each of them was round. Nor less nor more wide did they seem to me than those which, in my beautiful St. John's, are made as places for baptising priests, and one of which, not many years ago, I broke to save one who was choking in it be this a witness, undeceiving all. Out of the mouth of each a sinner's feet protruded, and as far as to the calf his legs, the rest of him remained within. The souls of all were both of them on fire, because of which their joints so strongly twitched they would have snapped green twigs and cords of grass. And as a flame on oily things is wont to move along the outer surface only, so likewise was it there from heels to toes. Who, teacher, is he yonder, who was tortured by twitching more than all the rest his mates, said I, and whom a red of flame is sucking? And he to me, if thou wouldst have me bear thee down yonder bank which lowest lies, from him thou'lt know both of himself and of his sins. And I, what pleases thee I like, my lord thou art, and that I part not from thy will thou knowest, as also what is left unsaid. We then upon the fourth embankment came, and turning round, descended on our left into that narrow bottom pierced with holes nor yet did my good teacher set me down from off his back but brought me to the hole of him who grieved so sorely with his shank who e'er thou art sad soul that holdest down thine upper portion planted like a stake i then began Say something, if thou canst. I there was like a fire that confesses a base assassin, who, on being planted, calls him again, that death may be delayed. And he cried out, Dost thou stand there already? Dost thou stand there already, Boniface? By several years the writing lied to me. Hath thou so quickly sated with the wealth for which thou didst not fear to seize by fraud? and outrage next the lady beautiful even such did i become as those are who not understanding what is answered them deem themselves mocked and think of no reply then virgil said tell him immediately i'm not the one i'm not the one thou thinkest and i replied to him as i was bidden whereat the spirit writhed with both his feet then sighing and with weeping voice he said what is it then that thou dost ask of me if to know who i am concern thee so that for it thou hast crossed the bank know then that i was with the mighty mantle clothed and verily the she-bear's son was i 
so eager to advance the cubs that wealth i pocketed up there and here myself the others who in working simony preceded me and gathered neath my head flattened between the fissures of the rock i in like manner shall down yonder fall when he arrives whom i believe thou wast when i of thee the sudden question asked but now already longer is the time that i thus upside down have cocked my feet then he will planted stay with ruddy souls for after him shall come from westward lands a lawless shepherd of still uglier deed and fit to cover him and me renewed shall jason be of whom in maccabees one read and as to that one his king yielded even so who governs france shall yield to this i know not whether i was here too bold in that i answered him in this strain only now tell me pray how great the treasure was our lord demanded of saint peter first before he placed the keys in his control surely he asked for naught but follow me nor yet did peter or the rest take gold or silver from matthias when by lot he took the place the guilty soul had lost therefore keep still for thou art rightly punished and take good care of that ill-gotten wealth which caused thee to be valiant against charles and were it not for this that i am still forbidden by reverence for the keys supreme thou hadst in keeping in the joyful life words of still greater weight would i employ because your greed by trampling on the good and raising the depraved afflicts the world the evangelist was thinking of your shepherds when she who on the waters hath her seat was seen by him to fornicate with kings the one who with the seven heads was born and from the ten horns her support received while virtue still was pleasing to her spouse ye've made yourselves a god of gold and silver and from idolaters how differ ye save that they worship one and ye a hundred ah constantine of how much ill was mother not thy conversion but the dower gift the earliest wealthy father took from thee while i was singing him such notes as these he whether it were wrath or conscience bit him was fiercely kicking out with both his feet i verily believed it pleased my leader he heeded with so glad a look throughout the utterance of those true clear words of mine he therefore took me up with both his arms and when he had me wholly on his breast he climbed again the path down which he came nor tired of holding me in his embrace but bore me to the summit of the arch which crosses from the fourth bank to the fifth when there he gently set his burden down gently because that crag was rough and steep and would be difficult for goats to cross from thence another trench was shown to me inferno twenty the eighth circle fraud the fourth trench diviners and soothsayers about strange punishments must i make verses and furnish matter for the twentieth song of this first lay which treats of those submerged already had i wholly given myself to looking down at its uncovered bottom which with the tears of agony was bathed when people in the great round trench i saw come weeping silently and at the pace at which in this world litanies advance then as my sight fell on them lower down wondrously twisted each of them appeared between the chin and where the chest begins for toward his loins his face was turned around and backward it behooved him to advance because of foresight they had been deprived by palsy some perhaps may thus have been entirely turned around but i've not seen it 
nor do I think there ever was one such. So may God let thee, reader, gather fruit from this thy reading. Think now for thyself how I could ever keep my own face dry, when at close range I saw a human image so twisted that the weeping of the eyes along the fissure bathed the back. Indeed, as on a rock of that hard crag I leaned, I wept so that my escort said to me, Art thou still foolish as the others are? Here liveth piety when holy dead is pity. Who then guiltier is than he who lets his feelings judge divine decrees? Lift, lift thy head, and see the man for whom before the Trojans' eyes the earth was opened. Whence all cried, Whither art thou rushing now, Amphiaraus? Why quittest thou the war? And he ceased not from plunging headlong down to Minos, who lays hold on every one. See how he makes a bosom of his shoulders, because he wished to see too far ahead, he looks behind, and backward goes his way. Behold Tiresias there, who changed his looks, when female he became from being male, his members being each and all transformed, and afterward he needs must strike again the two entwining serpents with his rod, ere he the plumage of a male regained. He, who to that one's belly turns his back, is Aaron's, who in Lunai's mountain quarries, where toils the Cararese who dwells below, among white marbles had as dwelling place a cave, from which his view was not cut off, when at the stars he gazed, or at the sea and she who yonder with dishevelled lock covers the breasts which thou dost not behold and has on that side all her hairy skin was manto who first searched through many lands then settled in the place where i was born thereof i'd have thee hear me speak a little after her father had from life departed, and Bacchus' city had become enslaved, she wandered long about the world. Up there, in lovely Italy beneath the Alps, which o'er the Tyrol lock out Germany, there lies a lake which is Bonocco called. From o'er a thousand springs I trow, between Garda and Val Camonica, the Pennine Alps is bathed by waters which therein find rest a midway place there is where trento shepherd and he of brescia and the veronese might each his blessing give if there he went pesciera next a fair and mighty fortress and fit to face both bergamasks and brescians sits where the shore lies lowest round about. There, all that in Bernaco's spacious lap cannot be held, flows out of it perforce, and down through verdant pastures forms a stream. When once its water gathers head to run, no more Bernaco, Mincio is its name, till at Governolo, it joins the Po. Not long its course, Before it finds low ground, O'er which it spreads, And making it a marsh, Is wont at times To be unsound in summer. Passing that way, The cruel virgin Saw a region in the middle of the fen, Untilled and naked of inhabitants, There to escape all human fellowship, and work her art, she settled with her staves, and lived, and there she left her empty body. Thereafter men, 
who all around were scattered, collected in that place which was a strong one, because it had a fen on every side. O'er oh, those dead bones of hers they built a town. Then, after her, who first picked out the site, they called it Mantua, with no other lot. The people in it were more numerous once, before the foolishness of Casalodi had been deceived by Pinamonte's guile. I charge thee then, if e'er thou hear it said, my town had its beginning otherwise, permit no falsehood to defraud the truth. Thy statements, teacher, are so sure to me, said I, and take such hold upon my faith that those of others would be burnt out coals. But tell me, if among these passing people thou seest any one deserving note, for my mind now is wholly bent on that. He told me then, the one who from his cheeks extends his beard across his swarthy shoulders, an augur was, when Greece lacked males so much, that for her cradles only few were left. Twas he who set, with Calchas' aid at Aulis, the time to cut the fleet's first rope. His name Eurypolis, and in a certain place he thus is called by my high tragedy. This thou knowest well, who knowest all of it. That other one, so thin about his flanks, was Michael Scott, who surely understood the artful game of magical deceits. Guido Bonatti see, and see as Dante, who wishes now that he had given heed to cord and leather, but too late repents. See the sad women who abandoned needles spindles and shuttles to become diviners these wrought their spells with herbs and images but now come on for cain is with his thorns holding the bounds of both the hemispheres and plays upon the waves below seville and round already was the moon last night thou surely must recall it since at times it harmed thee not when in the dark wood's depth thus he to me as, meanwhile, on we went. End of chapter 50《Chapter 51 of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Inferno 21. The Eighth Circle. Fraud. The Fifth Trench. Corrupt Politicians. Speaking of other things, my comedy cares not to sing. We thus from bridge to bridge moved on, and one upon the summit stopped, in order to behold the next ravine of Malabolge, and the next vain cries, and I beheld it wonderfully dark, and just such sticky pitch as that which boils in the Venetian's arsenal in winter for caulking up again the unsound ships which cannot then be sailed, instead of which as one a new one builds one plugs the ribs of that which many voyages has made one hammers at the stern and at the prow another one fashions oars another cordage twists while still another mends a jib or mainsail such was the coarse dense pitch which not by fire but by an art divine boiled there below and lined the bank on every side i saw the pitch but nothing in it save the bubbles the boiling raised and that the whole of it kept swelling up and settling back compressed while i was gazing fixedly down yonder my leader cried to me beware beware and drew me to himself from where i was i then turned round as one who longs to see the thing which it behooves him to escape, 
and who when by a sudden fear unmanned although he sees delays not his departure and i perceive behind us a black devil come running up along the rocky crag ah how ferocious in his looks he was and in his actions how severe he seemed with wings outspread and light upon his feet his shoulder which was sharp and high was loaded with both a sinner's haunches whom he held clutched tightly by the sinews of his feet oh malabranch from abridge he cried here's one of santa zita's ancient put him beneath for i'm for more of them returning to that town which i have well stocked therewith there say pontero every one's a grafter a no for money there becomes a yes he hurled him down and o'er the rugged crag returned and never was a mastiff loosed with so much hurry to pursue a thief the other sank and then rose doubled up those fiends though who were sheltered by the bridge cried here <laughs> the holy face availeth not one here swims otherwise than in the secchio if therefore thou dost not desire our hook protrude not from the surface of the pitch they pricked him then with o'er a hundred prongs and said here under cover must thou dance that if thou canst thou mayest thieve secretly not otherwise do cooks have scullions plunge the meat with hooks into the cauldron's midst to hinder it from floating on its surface thereat my kindly teacher said to me that here thy presence be not known crouch down behind a rock which may avail to screen thee and be not thou afraid for any harm that may be done to me who know these things for i in phrase like this have been before he then passed on beyond the bridge's head and when the sixth embankment had been reached he had to show assurance in his face with just the storm and fury wherewith dogs break out and rush upon a poor old man who stops and begs at once from where he is from neath the little bridge those devils issued and turned against him all their grappling hooks but he cried out be none of you malicious before your grappling hooks take hold of me let one of you advance and hear me speak then take ye counsel as to grappling me then all cried out let malakoda go thereat one started while the rest kept still and as he came said what does this avail him dost thou think malakoda said my teacher that as thou seest i have hither come safe until now from all your hindrances unhelped by will divine and favouring fate let us go on for it is willed in heaven that i should show another this wild road thereat his pride received so great a fall that at his feet he dropped his grappling hook and to the rest said let him not be wounded my leader thereupon cried out to me thou that among the bridges broken rocks art crouching safely now regain my side i therefore moved and quickly came to him then all the fiends advanced so far i feared they would not keep their word even thus i once saw infantry who under pledge of safety were from caprona coming forth afraid when among so many foes they saw themselves then wholly to my leader's side i drew nor from their faces which did not look good did i remove my eyes for as their prongs they lowered one fiend to another said wouldst thou that i should touch him on his rump and they replied yes see thou nick it for him but that fiend who was with my leader talking turned round at once and said to him keep still keep still there scar magnione then to us further advance along this present crag cannot be made 
because the sixth arch yonder lies wholly shattered on the ground below but if it please you still to go ahead go on along this ridge there is near by another crag which furnishes a path then this hour five hours later yesterday twelve hundred six and sixty years had passed since here the path was broken i am sending some of my company in that direction to see if any yonder air themselves go on with them for they will not be bad step forward alecchino and calcabrina he then began to say thou to cagnazzo and that old barbariccia guide the ten have libicoccio go and drag ignazzo tusk Kiriato too and graffia cane with barbarello and crazy rubicante search round about the boiling birdline pitch let these be safe as far as that next crag which all unbroken goes across the den oh teacher what is this i see said i if thou know how pray let us go alone for i request no escort for myself if thou as wary art as thou art wont dost thou not notice how they gnash their teeth and with their eyebrows threaten us with woe and he to me i would not have thee frightened let them grin on them as they like for that their doing at the wretches who are boiled they wheeled and moved along the left bank then but not till each as signal toward their leader had first thrust out his tongue between his teeth and he had of his rump a trumpet made inferno twenty two the eighth circle fraud the fifth trench corrupt politicians and now have i seen cavalry break camp start to attack or be reviewed and even at times retreat in order to escape scouts have i also seen upon your lands o aratines raids too have i beheld and tournaments and tilting matches fought with trumpets now and now with bells with drums and beacon signals made from fortresses with native and with foreign things but never have i seen horse or infantry or ship by sign of either land or sky set out with instrument of wind as odd as that with the ten demons we were going on ah the fierce company but in a church with saints consort with gluttons at an inn upon the pitch alone was i intent that i might see all details of the trench and of the people who were burned therein as dolphins do when arching up their backs they give the warning which bids mariners take measures for the safety of their ship even so at times his suffering to relieve one of the sinners there displayed his back and hid it in less time than lightning takes and as in ditches at the water's edge frogs stay with nothing but their muzzles out and thus conceal their feet and all the rest even so on all sides did those sinners stay and now that barbariccia was approaching they likewise neath the boiling pitch withdrew i saw and still it stirs my heart with horror one waiting thus as oft while one frog stays it happens that another scurries off and graffia carne who was nearest to him hooking his pitch-smeared tresses pulled him up so that an otter he appeared to me i knew by now the names of each and all i noted them so well when they were chosen and when they called each other noticed how oh rubicante see thou set thy claws upon him so that thou peel off his skin the accursed all cried out together then and i 
my teacher if thou canst contrive to learn who that wretch is who thus has fallen into his adversary's hands my leader thereupon drew near to him and asked him whence he was and he replied <coughs> of navarre's kingdom i a native was my mother placed me out to serve a lord for she had for she had borne me to a rascal knave who both himself and what he owned destroyed i next in good king tybalt's household served and there i set myself to practise graft for which i paid the reckoning in this heat here Cariato, from whose mouth protruded as from a boar's a tusk on either side caused him to feel how one of them could rip among bad cats the mouse had fallen now for barbariccia clasped him in his arms and said stand up while i am clutching him then toward my teacher having turned his face he said ask him again if more thou wish to know of him before the others rend him my leader then now tell me knowest thou any among the other sinners neath the pitch who latin is and he not long ago i left a man from that vicinity would that like him i still were covered up for i should there fear neither claw nor hook here libby Cucho said we've born too much and with his hook so seized him by the arm and tore it that he carried off a piece and drag ignazzo also wished to clutch him down at his legs but there decurium then turned right around at them with threatening looks when they were somewhat pacified again of him who still was looking at his wound my leader asked without delay who then was he from whom thou tookst unlucky leave as thou hast said to land upon the shore and he made answer that was fra gomita galura's man a vessel of all fraud who when he held in hand his master's foes so dealt with them that each is glad their money he took and as he puts it let them all off easy and even in other offices was not a petty but a first-rate grafter with him don michel zanch of logodoro associates and never do their tongues feel tired out by talking of sardinia but oh look at the other grinning there more would i say but i'm afraid lest that one be making ready now to claw my skin then the great provost turned toward farfarello who rolled his eyes as if he meant to strike and said ah yonder thou malicious bird if you desire thereat began again the terror-stricken man to see or hear tuscans or lombards i will have some come but let the evil claws here stand aside a little that their vengeance be not feared and i while sitting in this very place for one that i am shall make seven come out when i shall whistle as i want it is when any one of us protrudes himself cared not so at this speech his muzzle raised and shook his head and said here the sly trick devised by him to cast himself below then he who frauds in great abundance had replied to him tricky indeed am i when for my mates a greater pain i win here alachin could not control himself but said in opposition to the rest i shall not gallop after thee in case thou die but o'er oh, the pit shall beat my wings the ridge abandoned be the bank a scream to see if thou alone art more than we now reader of a new sport shalt thou hear each turned his eyes the other way and he the first who had thereto been most opposed the navarese chose well his time stood firmly upon the ground and jumping suddenly from what they purposed freed himself thereby for this each felt himself to blame but most the one who of the loss had been the cause hence he moved first and shouted thou art caught 
but little did it profit him for wings could not outmeasure fear as one went under the other flying upward raised his breast nor different is the speed with which a duck dives under water when a hawk draws near who vexed and baffled thus flies up again then calcabrina angered by the flight flew out behind him glad that one escaped because it let him scuffle with the other and then the grafter having disappeared he turned his claws upon his own companion and grappled with him o'er the ditch but he being indeed a fighting sparrow hawk fitted to claw him well they both fell down into the middle of the boiling fen a sudden separator was the heat but rising thence was quite impossible they had their wings so limed with sticky pitch then barbariccia vexed as were the rest his mates had four of them with all their hooks fly to the other bank on both sides then they speedily descended to their posts and stretched their hooks out toward the pitch belimed who now were cooked inside their crusted hides and thus embarrassed we abandoned them inferno twenty three the eighth circle fraud the sixth trench hypocrite silent alone and unaccompanied we went along one first and one behind as minor friars go when on the road my thoughts by reason of the present brawl were turned to aesop's fable that wherein he talks about the frog and mouse for now and at this moment are no more alike than one is like the other if beginning and end be linked by an attentive mind and even as one thought from another springs so next from that one was another born which doubled my first fear hence thus i thought these devils have been scorned on our account and with such injury and scoff indeed that i believe that they are greatly vexed if anger to ill will be joined though come more fiercely after us than doth a dog the rabbit which he seizes with his teeth already was i feeling all my hair bristling with fear when gazing back intent i said if teacher thou hide not thyself and me with speed i dread the evil claws we have them now behind us and i so imagine them that i already feel them and he if i were made of leaded glass thine outward image i would not reflect more quickly than thine inward i receive even now thy thoughts were coming among mine with outlook and intent so similar that i with both a single purpose formed if it be true the right bank slopeth so that to the following trench we can descend we shall escape from this imagined chase he had not finished telling me his plan when not far off i saw them coming on with wings outspread intent on seizing us my leader then took hold of me at once even as a mother by the noise aroused and seeing close to her the burning flames seizes her child and flees and doth not stop since caring more for him than for herself even long enough to clothe her with a shift and downward from the ridge of that hard bank his back he yielded to the hanging rock which closes one side of the following trench water there moved as swiftly through a sluice to turn the overshot wheel of a mill when closer to the paddles it approaches as did my teacher o'er that salvage bank bearing me down with him upon his back as though his son i were and not his mate his feet had hardly reached the trenches bed below when they were on the ridge above just over us but naught was now to fear because the providence on high which willed to place them in the fifth trench as its servants takes from them 
all the power of leaving it a painted people found we there below who moving with exceedingly slow steps shed tears and in their looks appeared subdued and weary cloaks they had equipped with cowls lowered before their eyes and cut like those which in cologne are fashioned for her monks so gilded outside are they that they dazzle but inside all are lead and of such weight that those which frederick clothed men with were straw o oh, cloak that wearies through eternity we turned again as ever to the left along with them intent on their sad plaint but owing to the weight that weary folk came on so slowly that new company we had at every motion of our legs hence to my leader i contrive to find some one whom we may know by deed or name and while thus going move thine eyes around and one who heard my tuscan speech cried out behind us stay your feet o ye that run so quickly through the gloomy air from me perhaps shalt thou receive what thou dost ask thereat my leader turned and said now wait and then proceed according to his pace i stopped and two i saw whose faces showed great mental haste to be with me and yet their burden and the narrow path delayed them on coming up to us they watched me long with eyes askance and uttered not a word then toward each other turning thus they spoke this one seems by the action of his throat alive but if they're dead by what might them go they uncovered by the heavy stole and then addressing me they said o oh, tuscan who to the gathering of sad hypocrites art come scorn not to tell us who thou art and i to them on arno's lovely stream and in its famous town both born and bred i'm in the body i have always had but who are ye adown whose cheeks there drips as i perceive so great a woe and what the penalty which sparkles on you thus these orange cloaks one answered are of lead and of such thickness are they that the weights thus cause the scales that balance them to creak we jovial friars were in polygnes i catalan and lodoringo he by name and chosen by thy town together as one alone is usually called to keep its peace and such we were as still in the gardingo's neighbourhood appears o oh, friars i began your evil deeds but said no more because there struck mine eyes one crucified by three stakes on the ground on seeing me sighs through his beardy blue and writhed all over then fra catalan informed thereby of what had happened said the pinioned man thou gazest at advised the pharisees that it expedient was to torture one man for the people's sake stretched crosswise as thou seest on the road and naked he is forced to be the first to feel how much whoever passes ways and in like fashion suffer in this ditch his father-in-law and others of the council which proved a seed of evil for the jews i then saw virgil marvelling at him who in the figure of a cross was stretched so basely in eternal banishment then to the friar he addressed these words be not displeased to tell us an ye may if on the right there lie a crossing place by means of which we too may issue hence without black angels being forced to come and extricate us from this trench's bed nearer than thou dost hope he then replied a crag there is 
which at the great round wall begins and all the cruel trenches spans save that at this one it is broken down and spans it not but ye can climb the ruins which from its base lie piled along the slope my leader kept his head bowed down a while then said wrongly did he report the thing who yonder grapples sinners with his hook the friar then among the many vices given the devil at bologna i once heard that he a liar is and sire of lies thereat my leader with great strides departed somewhat disturbed by anger in his looks then i the burden left and followed on behind the footprints of beloved feet Inferno, 24, the eighth circle, fraud, the seventh trench, Thebes. When, in the youthful season of the year, the sun beneath Aquarius warms his locks, while southward now the knights pursue their way, and when the hoar-frost draws upon the ground the counterfeit of her white sister's face, though shortly lasts the temper of her pen the peasant lacking provender gets up looks out and seeing all the country white slaps himself on the thigh returns indoors and walking to and fro laments poor wretch not knowing what to do then later on returning out again recovers hope on seeing that the world has shortly changed its face and taking down his shepherd's staff out to their feeding drives his tender sheep even thus my teacher filled me with dismay when i beheld such trouble in his face thus too the plaster quickly reached the wound for when we had attained the ruined bridge my leader turned to me with that sweet look which at the mountain's foot i first perceived first having well surveyed the ruined arch after some counsel taken with himself his arms he opened and took hold of me and like a man who ponders while he acts and always seems to look ahead even so while upward to the top of one great rock he pushed me he sought out another crag and said take hold of that one next but first see whether it be fit to bear thy weight no path was this for one who wears a cloak since scarcely could we two though he was light and i was pushed ascend from rock to rock and had the slope on that bank not been shorter than on the other i know not of him but i would surely have been overcome but since the whole of Malabolge slopes down to the opening of the lowest well, such is the nature of each trench's banks, that one is high and low the following one, and yet we reached at length the ridge above, from which the crag's last rock projects. My breath was so exhausted from my lungs, when up at last, that I could go no further nay on arriving i sat down at once thus henceforth must thou rid thyself of sloth my teacher said for one attains not fame sitting on cushions or neath canopies and he that lives without attaining it leaveth on earth such traces of himself as smoke doth in the air or foam in water therefore get up or come thy troubled breath with that sole energy which wins all fights unless it sink beneath its body's weight a longer stairway must be climbed tis not enough that these stairs have been left if then thou understand me let it profit thee i thereupon arose and showed myself better equipped with breath than i had felt and said Go on, for I am strong and bold. We took the pathway 
up along the crag which rocky was narrow and hard to climb and steeper far than what the one before not to seem weak i talked as on i went this from the next trench caused a voice to come which was incapable of forming words though i was on the summit of the arch which crosses here i know not what it said but moved to anger seemed the one who spoke downward i looked and yet my living eyes could not attain the bottom for the dark hence teacher try to reach the following ridge said i and let me from the wall descend for as i hear but do not understand so looking down from hence i make out nothing no other answer give i thee he said save that of action for a fair request ought to be met by deeds without a word we climbed down from the bridges further head where to the eighth embankment it is joined and then the trench was clearly shown to me and in it i beheld a frightful throng of snakes and of so weird a kind that still the memory of them freezes up my blood let libya and her sand no longer boast for though she breed calidri jacoli with kentri farai and ampes binai ne'er with all ethiopia did she show nor e'en with what above the red sea lies either so many or such evil plagues among this cruel and most dismal swarm people were running nude and terrified and with no hope of hole or heliotrope their hands were bound behind their backs with snakes whose tail and head were thrust between their loins and tied together in a knot in front then lo a serpent hurled himself at one who near our bank was standing and transfixed him there where the neck is to the shoulders joined never were o or i so quickly written as he took fire and burning up must needs turn wholly into ashes as he fell whereat though thus destroyed upon the ground the dust assembling of its own accord turned instantly into the selfsame man so likewise as great sages have declared the phoenix dies and then is born again as she approaches her five hundredth year she feeds through life on neither herbs or grain but on a momum only and incense tears her final swaddling bands are nard and myrrh and as is he who falls nor knoweth how by demon force which pulls him to the ground or other inhibition binding man and who on getting up again looks round wholly bewildered by the great distress which he has felt and as he looks he sighs such was that sinner after he had risen o oh, power of god how truly just thou art that in revenge dost deal such blows as these thereat my leader asked him who he was and he replied into this wild ravine i reigned from tuscany not long ago mule that i was a beast's life not a man's i liked i'm vanifucci called the beast for me pistoia was a worthy den then tell him not to slip away i said and ask what fault thrust him down here for i once saw in him a man of blood and strife the sinner then who understood feigned not but turned toward me both mind and face and said as with a sudden shame he coloured up that thou hast caught me in the misery in which thou seest me gives me greater pain than that which took me from the other life i can't refuse what thou dost ask of me and placed thus low because it was i who robbed the vestry known for its fair ornaments a deed once falsely put upon another 
but now lest thou enjoy this sight of me if thou art ever out of these dark lands thine ears to my announcement opened here pistoia first despoils herself of nevi then florence changes folk and government from val de magra mars draws forth a bolt by turbid clouds enveloped next with wild and cruel storm a battle will be fought upon the piscine plain then suddenly the bolt will cleave the mist in such a way that every bianca will thereby be wounded and this i've said that it may give thee pain End of chapter 51